G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. More importantly, welcome back to the Voigtlander Besser 2 or in my best or even worst German accent, the Voigtlander Besser 2. A 1950s coupled rangefinder camera, 6x9 format, takes 120 roll film and I'll get 8 frames off one roll of film. I've used this camera numerous times. It's probably my all-time favourite film camera actually. It's up there with the best of them. I love the Besser 2. I've actually featured this camera a few times on my channel. Now one fellow that viewed one of my previous videos featuring this camera is a bloke called Randall Stewart. And I've seen him commenting on, on various people's channels, on various cameras. This guy absolutely knows his stuff. And he's supplied me with a little bit of information uh, which I think it's only fair to share. So to make sure I don't make a balls of it, I'm going to read verbatim from my little list here. Thanks very much Randall, really appreciate it. Okay, so when introduced the Besser 2 came with a choice of lenses. Those were, in increasing order of cost and optical performance, the Color Scopar, a superb copy of the Zeiss Tessar 4 element, a Color Heliar 5 element and the Apollantar, an almost mythical lens. The majority of the Besser 2 cameras use the Scopar, which for the 6x9 is more than sufficient. Most of the rest use the Hilliar, which is probably not sharper than the Scopar at optimum aperture settings, but offers better performance at wider lens openings. The Apple Lanthor was so highly prized that many of the cameras with them were destroyed to remove the lens for other uses. They are now collectibles with a market value far greater than what their use as a camera is worth. I did know previously that there are three different variations of lens that came with the Besser 2. I didn't know much about the details. I knew the Apple Lanthar was the, the one to get if you could actually source it and could actually afford it. My particular Besser 2 comes with a Color Helia 105mm f3.5 lens, which I guess on the information supplied by Randall is a middle of the range lens. So uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. Not the worst, not the best. Happily sat in the middle. Now my Besser 2 has a synchro compo shutter with shutter speeds ranging from one second to one five hundredth of a second. My particular camera sticks at sort of shutter speeds lower than one twenty-fifth of a second, but that's not, not too big a deal. With all that being said, <laughs> it's an absolutely fantastic camera. Love this thing to bits. Alright guys, let's get some film in this beautiful camera. Time, I don't think you understand. My stubborn soul is fumbled again. It's not enough hours that we burn in the day, and I come to a stand. I can't meet you, and I'm sorry. I say I can't see you I can't run out of time for you But I always do when the sun goes out at night I'm in my cocoon So this is amazing, Cape Kidnappers Coast Absolutely beautiful walk. To where we've got to go is only about a two and a half hour walk one way. Unfortunately, we've not got that time because we've got to get Seth back for his Christmas dinner. So we're going to get maybe three quarters of the way, then we'll turn back and head back. The trick about this, you've got to start your walk two hours before low tide to make sure you get there and back so you don't get cut off. And you've also got to be really vigilant with these cliffs because at any moment they can and certainly do slip. There was a number of slips and a few people got uh, got injured. I don't think anybody's been actually killed that I know of, but uh, the potential is always here, so you've got to be on your guard. What is that little device do? What device? That little thing. That just records light. Oh, yeah. Come back. It's just, no, just stay where you are. Yeah. I'm just going to get a focus on you first. Number one, beautiful. Can you freeze 
Yeah. No, it's a old film camera, mate. It's quite hard to focus it sometimes. Beautiful. That's good, mate. That's good. Hold it there, buddy. Looking over there. Awesome, bruv. We're rattling along, mate. Seth, move that out way a bit. A little bit. Yeah, that's good. Looking up. Wait there, wait there. Looking up. Awesome. Try and get a bit close to you. Woo Got you. Nice one. Beauty. Cheers, mate. That's what we need, mate. Cheers, my bruv. That is eight frames. Shot. I kind of see that rain coming in. Yeah. Big storms this afternoon, mate. We might be out photographing again. Yeah, yeah. This afternoon. So that is eight frames shot on this roll of film. Doesn't take long. Okay, so film shot. We'll get the film out of the camera. So just make sure. Just gonna wind on a little bit extra. Make sure the film's rolled up properly. Open the back of the camera. And there she is. Lift that pin. Bring out the roll. Okay, that's ready to be developed. We need to get the film into the canister. So first of all, we need to get the reel. We need to set it to 120. That's currently set for 35 millimeter film development. We'll just open that up and lock it off. So we're gonna stick that in the dark bag. Stick all the bits that I need. A pair of scissors, do I need a pair of scissors? I don't need them for 120. Uh, and the roll of film, I'll keep that in my hand until I get in there. So now we're gonna get the film, take it into the dark bag, and thread it onto the spiral, completely in the dark. This is the tricky bit. So again, finally, after a little bit of towing and throwing, a few mistakes, I finally managed to get the roll of film onto the spool. That's your film, it's now in the canister, it's now light tight, time to start throwing some chemicals about. On the massive dev chart we have got Ilford FP4 Plus, developer is Kodak D76. We're going to develop it at stock solution. ISO is 125 box speed, that will give us for 120 roll film, 8.5 minutes at 20 degrees. Slip in 500ml of Kodak D76, stock solution. There you go, and then we're going to start the timer. And that's it, we'll see it again in eight and a half minutes. And for every minute of the development, I'll just give it a 10 second inversion, just to keep the fluid mixed up. And then we'll give it a bang, just to release any bubbles. Develop it out. Fresh water stock bath in. I'll do a couple of these. So you can use chemical stock bath 
the hay can't personally stand the smell of it, so I just use uh, fresh tap water. This just stops the development. And then the next step is fixer. I've got this at a 1 to 4 dilution. 500 mil in there. Put the lid on, give it a bit of a spin. And we'll probably leave that for about 3, 4, maybe 5 minutes. Just to fix the image. Fix it out. Put that straight under the clean tap water wash. Leave that to wash now for about maybe 10-15 minutes. Save the fixer for another day. Right, that's just about had long enough I guess. I'll take the lid off now. And the last stage that I do is add just a little bit of washing up detergent and that, acts, that just acts as a wetting agent that helps the film dry now this is always the nervy part for me let's hope that we've got something on this roll of film well we certainly have oh yes I'm not sure if you can see that too well here but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight they look like very well exposed negatives. Try this roll of film, get it scanned, and we'll, uh, we'll show you some results very shortly. Happy days, happy days. So after photographing the negatives on a DSLR and a macro lens over a light box, I've imported the scans into Lightroom Classic. And all I'm going to do is show you how I convert one negative into a positive using Lightroom Classic. This is the way I do it. I've not got Negative Lab Pro. It's something that I will get in future, but uh, I've just not got around to getting it. We'll give it a crop first. So I just want to crop in, just crop into my eye. There's a few little water spots at the bo bottom there. So I'll just crop above them. And that's the, so I'm going to give it an auto levels. I'm going to hit black and white just to take any color fringing off. This is where the magic happens. Just watch this. So into curves, into tone curves, and I'm just going to invert the tone curves. And here we go, that from a negative is now a positive. Just going to give it a little bit of an inverted S curve, cropping a little bit tighter. How cool is that? A 1950s film camera, that is pretty sharp. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is just clone out a few little dust spots. We've got a little bit of a hair there, whatever that is. We're just going to move around the image. I think that's a bird, but it, I could be wrong. It's gone, no matter what it was. I'm seeing that my horizon is on the piss, so I'll, I'll correct that shortly. Straighten up my horizon a little bit. I'm quite pedantic about the horizons being straight. That's not too bad. A little bit more, maybe. That's better. Okay, we've got a nice straight horizon there. So what I'm going to do now is nip down to the clarity. We're just going to give it a little bit of clarity, maybe 16% or plus 16. A little bit of dehaze. We're going to put a little mask in there. Bring down the exposure on the sky a little bit to add a little bit of detail. Obviously it's an inverted tone curve, so we've got to do it the opposite way. And that there has brought out another dust mark that I can see. So we'll just bring that a little bit more, just dampen up the sky a little bit. We'll go back into the clone tool and just get rid of that a little bit of a white mark there come out of there that looks to be pretty shiny we're going to create a mask just to give a little bit of light to our seth let's try select subject see if it finds it and it's found it actually here so that's that's pretty cool so what we're going to do is just bring it up bring the exposure up a little bit and a little bit on the shadows there's not much I want to do with that, just to make him stand out a little bit more. The very last step, we're going to scroll down to the post crop vignette. And we're just going to darken up the edges just a smidge, just a little bit, not much. I'm just going to get rid of that little dust spot there, little dust spot there, little dust spot there. I could go around this image and really find every little single spot, but I'm not going to do. <laughs> that will do. If 
but a 1950s camera I am chuffed to bits with the results of that photograph I hope you've enjoyed this I'll put a slideshow of all the images together then right at the end I'm going to add the shots that I took with the Leica Q2 just to finish off the day so from me here in New Zealand I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and hope you all have a great new year and until next time catch you later thanks for watching I'm just going to get a focus on you first number one beautiful Quite hard to focus it sometimes. Beautiful. Awesome, bruv. Awesome. Gotcha. Beauty. Cheers, mate. I can't meet you Run out of time I don't think you understand My stubborn soul Is fumbled again It's not enough hours That we burn in the day And I come to a stand I can't meet you And I'm sorry My friend I say I can't see you I can run out of time for you But I always do when the sun goes out at night I'm in my cocoon mm, I can't run out of time for you and I always do It doesn't hurt me When you bite I know what I'm doing It's never with you And I refer to my When the sun goes out at night